one of the questions that comes up, uh, and it's an interesting question because it involves different situations. We know that when we say Kiddush Friday night, one person says Kiddush, and that person, when he says Kiddush, usually the father of the household has kavana to fulfill the obligation for everybody else. And that's fine. That's proper. That's the halakha. Um, among the Chabad Nikim, they have this custom that um, anybody who's a father has to say Kiddush for his family. So let's say his son is going with his family, spending Shabbat with his, uh, with his father. Then the father says Kiddush for, for his wife. And then the son says Kiddush for his wife and kids. The truth, the halakha is, one person can say Kiddush. It doesn't even have to be the father. It can be any of the family members who's a uh, bar mitzvah and is chayav in the Kiddush can say the Kiddush. So if I go to my father's house and my father wants me to say Kiddush for him, I can do that. It's fine. Um, but the more interesting question is, can I say Kiddush for someone who already fulfilled his obligation, right? So let's say I said Kiddush for myself and I finished eating and now my neighbor next door doesn't know how to say Kiddush and they want to say Kiddush. Can I go to them and say Kiddush for them? Friday night, I, they, want to, they want to say Kiddush and they don't know how to say it. Is that all? I already fulfilled my obligation. I don't have to say Kiddush anymore. Can I go now to my neighbor and say Kiddush for my neighbor? You understand the question? And the halakha is, yes, it is permissible. I want to explain to you why. There is a rule and it is as follows. Kol Yisrael arevim ze baze. What does it mean, kol Yisrael arevim ze baze? It means that every Jew is in a sense an arev for every other Jew. Well, what is an arev? Arev means a guarantor. So let's say Reuven needs to take out a loan, but he doesn't have credit. He goes to his rich friend. He has a rich friend called Levi. And he says, Levi, can you sign the, you know, can you be a guarantor on the loan? Can you guarantee, can you guarantee the, um, can you guarantee the loan for me? Can you be my guarantor? So he says, sure. That person is called an Arev. An Arev is a person who guarantees the loan for someone else. So what does it mean, Kol Yisrael? Every Jew is the guarantor for every other Jew. It means as follows in this context. It has a few meanings. But in this context, it means that every Jew is responsible for the performance of the misfot by every other Jew. So we all have obligations. Our obligations are towards God. That's like a loan. We must fulfill our obligation. And God intends to collect the money. Okay. Now, I see my friend, he's not doing what he needs to do. He's not fulfilling the misvot. I say, who cares? That's his problem. I'm fulfilling my misvot. I'm putting on tefillin in the morning. I'm saying kiddush Friday night. What do I care that my friend is not doing what he needs to do? That's not my problem. That's his problem. So the answer is no. Kol Yisrael Alevim Zebazem means we all, in a sense, are guarantors of all of our fellow Jews. So if somebody doesn't do a misva, we should try, if we can, if we can, to cause him to do the misva, because we're responsible for them, right? So if you don't have influence on someone, then there's nothing you can do. You know, there's some people when I lived in Israel who were not just um, uneducated about the fulfillment of the Torah and the misfot, but they didn't want to fulfill the Torah and the misfot, and they would get angry at the idea that other people are filling a Torah and misfot. I was once in a uh, car with someone, a colleague, and uh, his daughter was getting married, and um, his daughter was getting married, so the Rabbanut forced her to go to the mikveh before the marriage. And the person was complaining bitterly about the barbaric ritual of having the, his daughter go to the mikveh. I mean, can you imagine this is, this is a terrible barbarism? Yes, okay. So obviously there's some people we can't help, right? We cannot help everybody. But let's say somebody comes to me and says, I need your help. I want to do a misvah. 
can I walk away and say, no, it's your, it's your problem. You know, you deal with it. So the answer is, Kol Yisrael Arivim Zebazeh. Every Jew is responsible for every other Jew. And if we can help, we should help. So getting back to my question, if I did Kiddush Friday night, I fulfilled the Mar Mitzvah. I did what I need to do. Can I say Kiddush for somebody else who didn't fulfill the Mitzvah? And the answer is yes. Since I'm responsible for him, it's like the guarantor and the lender comes to the guarantor and says, pay back the money. I think, yes, I'll do it. Here, I'm paying it back. I'll take care of it. If you don't care, you have to take care of it. So here, I do Kiddush Friday night for the person who wants to hear the Kiddush. That's the halakha. It's not just for, for Kiddush Friday night. It could also be for Tiki Atta Shofar. Let's say I fulfilled the obligation of blowing the Shofar. I fulfilled it. That's it. I did my Mitzvah. I go home. I eat lunch. Somebody comes to me, he says, you know what, can you blow the shofar for me? I say, uh, I fulfill my obligation. I don't have to blow the shofar for you. You take care of yourself. That's not, that's not the proper way to do it. I remember Allah Shalom Igor, he just passed away. As you know, I spoke to his wife today, Chazita, she's really sad. Anybody who can call her up and, uh, and express condolences to her, I think it would make her happy. Uh, but anyway, Rosh Hashanah, he couldn't make it to Knis. And... Uh, he was very upset that he couldn't hear the Tegiyat HaShofar. He couldn't, so I, come, I came with Joey. We came with Joey, and uh, Joey blew the Shofar for him. And he said the Beracha. How can Joey say the Beracha? Asher Kedeshanu, v'misvata v'sovanu, l'shmo ha'kol Shofar. How can he say the Beracha? He only fulfilled the obligation. He doesn't have to say the Beracha. The answer is, there's another Jew. The other Jew wants to do the misvah. You're obligated to help him. And you can even you say the beracha. That's it. Thank you. You can even say the beracha. Excuse me. Seasonal allergies. No, no need to worry about uh, catching anything through Zoom anyway. But I'm still sending, letting you know it's seasonal, <laughs> seasonal allergies. Um, getting back to the class. You can blow the shofar. And you can say, you can say the beracha for the person. Because of the principle of Chol Yisrael. That's the law. There's another um, uh, application of this law. If a person wants to eat masa on the night of Pesach and he doesn't know how to say the beracha, again, I can say the beracha for him. I can say the beracha for him because he doesn't know how to say the beracha. I can say it for him and he can answer amen. So this is an important rule in, um, in, in, in the laws of Kiddush and in the laws of fulfilling somebody else's obligation to do the misfa. Question? Yeah, yes, Mikey. As far as do I need to partake in the uh, drinking when it comes to the Kiddush or in the eating of the Masa when I say the Baracha for him, even though I fulfill my obligation, how far do we... Is it a mixture? It's a very good question. I'll tell you the way I... First of all, it's a great question. My opinion is a person who says the beracha should drink from the kiddush, should drink from the wine. Likewise, if you're saying the beracha from masa, mm -hmm. you should actually eat from the masa because you said berkata That's my opinion, and that's the way I, I practice. Um, yes, but now getting back to the laws of. Um, and the fact that I can fulfill the obligation for somebody else. Um, this all applies to the extent that the person that I'm saying the beracha for actually has an obligation. But if a person I'm saying the beracha for doesn't have an obligation, I can't say the beracha. So let's say, same situation. It's Rosh Hashanah. Let's say in this case, my wife couldn't make it to Knis. She was babysitting. She was babysitting for the kids. I don't know. Uh, somebody was just born. One of, her, <laughs> one of our kids was born right around Rosh Hashanah. So the question is, she couldn't hear the shofar. She wants to hear the shofar. I come home. I can blow the shofar for her. Not a problem. Can I say the beracha for her? No, I can't. How come? 
because she's not obligated to hear the shofar. She can do the misvah, and that's wonderful that she wants to do the misvah, but she's petura me'a misvah. So when I say that you can say the beracha for somebody, even though you said it yourself, that's on condition that the person you're saying it for is actually obligated. So women are obligated to hear kiddush. So let's say Friday night, remember we used to have our kiddush Friday nights in the knis, in the Bet Knesset, right? The Sabbath, the Sabbath. I said kiddush. I come home, my wife didn't hear kiddush. She doesn't want to say kiddush herself. Can I say kiddush for her? Yes. How come? Because she's hayevet. She has an obligation. So if she has an obligation, I can fulfill the obligation for her. Yes, uh, Joey, I see you raising your hand. Uh, yes, I have a question. So in the morning, let's say, the morning uh, kiddush, as I mentioned to you before, that uh, we say bre- they have breakfast. So we say kiddush to have breakfast before they are able to to eat. So the question is, so my daughter who's 13, can she say it for them? Yeah. Uh, th- the answer is, yeah. She, since, since she is obligated, let's say uh, for some reason you don't want to say kiddush and, uh, you know, or you're, you're sleeping, you know, you're going for a walk and, you know, um, uh, you know, they woke up early and you're going for a walk already. So they want to eat and they want to say kiddush. Now, according to halacha, they're, they're not allowed to eat until they say kiddush. Right. doesn't matter whether they pray, whether they don't pray. That's a separate, completely different thing. So, you know, if my, my daughters, you know, when we lived in Israel, my daughters were home with us. Actually, my oldest daughter that was with us. But the point is, they used to wake up early. They didn't pray shahrit all the time. Sometimes they pray, they, 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 they be a little relaxed. They wanted to eat before they pray shahrit. I said, listen, you can eat before you pray shahrit. That's nice. You have to say kiddush. You cannot, you cannot eat until you say kiddush. It's Shabbat in the morning. So they would say kiddush. It doesn't matter what the age is. As long as they're 12 years older, 12 years and older, they say kiddush. So the answer is yes. You're 13 year old. You and your wife can continue going for a walk while your kids have an early morning breakfast. Right. And the 13 year old can say kiddush for herself and for everybody else. Absolutely. Okay. Any other she'elot? The bare minimum of that kiddush is really just given. Right? Oh, oh you're saying because of en kiddush and makom se'uda. No, I'm just saying on in Saturday morning, just saying somebody you're done. You don't have to say the intro paragraphs. It's not my kid. If somebody doesn't know how to say all of that, a young 13 year old, whatever, they don't have to feel uncomfortable. Oh, I don't know the whole kiddush. You can just they can say somebody mananan. Somebody's that and say no? Uh, no, you should say the you should say the Pesukim. You can say the the short version, which is Veshameru Bene Israel at Shabbat. Right. You should say that paragraph. Yes, absolutely. So you're, it's clear that you're saying it, you know, to, as, 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 as in honor of the Shabbat. So yes, you should, you should do that so that that's clear. Um, and uh, but if you don't want to say the long version, and, and, or something right. the name is Mole David, uh, that, that's fine. But you should say Kiddush. You should say the, uh, you should say the Kiddush, uh, meaning the Pesukim, a few Pesukim before. I have one more question. Please. So you said that we say kiddush to eat. It doesn't matter if you prayed before or not, correct? Well, I mean, it does. It does matter. A men, I mean, a, a, you know, we pray or we always pray before we eat. But if for some reason, let's say a person, I'll give you an example. Let's say a person is hypoglycemic. There are some people, thank you. There are some people who eat before they pray. Right. Hypoglycemic. I know somebody like that. He's actually a rabbi. Adam uh, Shamayim. Then he says kiddush. He eats and then he prays shahri. Okay. Thank you.